Nothing from the audio.
Yes, he is. 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 Everybody clap your hands and give God praise. Every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is my healer. Yes, he is my deliverer. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, my God. Yes, he is. Father, we bless you on this morning, oh, God. We thank you, God, for another chance, oh, God. Somebody transitioned, oh, God. But you saw it fit, Lord God, that we would come in, oh, God, and gather together in your presence, oh, God. Thank you, Lord, for a fresh anointing on the man of God. Thank you, God, that you brought him back safely, God. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Oh, you are a deliverer. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Have your way in this service on today, oh, God. Bless the babies, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Thank you, Lord God, that you are preparing us, oh, God, to hear the word, oh, God. We won't be the same as we came in. We'll walk out differently right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, bless the building fund. Thank you, Lord God, that there's more than enough money to renew and to restore the building, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we love you this morning and we trust you on this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. I will bless the Lord at all times. He shall continually be in my mouth. To all the visitors, those that are here and those that are at home, welcome to the People's Baptist Church. We thank you for blessing us with your presence. I know that you will have a great time today because our pastor is home. Amen. We thank God for watching over him, keeping him, and directing his path. And we know that he has some great plans from God for us for 2023. So get ready to give all your time and your effort unto the Lord. Praise be to God. God bless you. Morning, church. Morning. I feel like I've been here all day. Eight o'clock service was wonderful. Thank you, Pastor. Y'all missed a good service. These are your announcements for the week. First, we want to say happy birthday to all those who are celebrating in the month of September. Your upcoming events, 
Today we celebrate the wonderful and heartfelt work of the Pastors AIDS Ministry. This important ministry assists Pastor Good in so many ways, and we are thankful for their continued efforts on his behalf. Pastor Good will be preaching on September the 12th at 1.45 at 2nd Mount Zion Baptist Church for the Philadelphia Ministers Conference. The church is located at 3814 Parish Street in Philadelphia, and all are welcome. The People's Food Pantry will be holding its next food distribution on Wednesday, September the 7th from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. The Lady Genevieve Williams Hospitality Ministry is still selling tickets for the annual Unsung Hero Luncheon that will take place on Saturday, September the 17th at 2 p.m. Ticket payments are $25 and it's cash only. and They can be purchased up until next Sunday, September the 11th. Men's Day is approaching, and we will be celebrating that day on Sunday, September the 18th. The theme is the steps of a good man, Psalms 37, 23. The colors are gray and burgundy, and the assessment is $100. Dinners will be sold following morning service. If you are interested in joining the men's choir, rehearsals will be on Friday, September the 9th, and Friday, September the 16th, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. If you have any questions, you can reach out to Brother Joe Niblins. We are now hosting an in-person Sunday morning worship service at 8 a.m. This traditional service lasts one hour and all are welcome. Please share with your family and friends. Overcomers annual day and concert. Please save the date for the celebration of the Overcomers Ministry annual day. They will be hosting Zach Williams' One Accord in Concert on Sunday, October the 16th at 3 p.m. The People's Book Club will begin holding meetings in the fall. The selected book title is Listening to God by Charles Stanley. If you are interested in participating, please sign up on the sign-up sheet in the hall where you can see Dick Deacon Kenneth Major. The book price is $9.49. Meeting times and days will be updated soon. People's is partnering with the University of Pennsylvania to begin a tutoring program at Global Leadership Academy. If you are interested in participating as a site volunteer or just want more information, you can see Sister Sherry Moore. Bible Enrichment will resume on Wednesday, September the 14th at 6 p.m. as a hybrid option. And in person. A study of 1 Corinthians is the new series. More, more details to come. Your meeting dates for the week. The Little Angels Dance Ministry will begin on Thursday, September the 8th at 6 p.m. All who are ages 6 to 11 or years old are welcome to attend. And you don't have to be a member. The deacons will be having their monthly meeting on Saturday, September the 10th at 12 p.m. All deacons should be in attendance. The Ministry Council will be meeting on Monday, September the 12th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The link will be available next Sunday. Mass Choir. Pastor has called for all those who participate in the Mass Choir to stay for a meeting next Sunday following 1030 service. And membership news. We want to continue to keep Brother Keith Buell, the son of Sister Patricia Buell, in prayer. We praise God that he is doing better this week. And he is currently home. Yes. We pray for his continuing healing. Please keep the family of Sister Marie Clark in prayer. Sister Clark passed away last week. Her funeral services will be here on Friday, September the 9th. The viewing is 9 a.m. with the service to follow at 11 a.m. The Overcomers 12 step in their biblical comparison. We made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Matthew 5, 24. At this time, we'll have the uh, usher recognition of the monk. And this concludes your announcements for the week. Good morning, church. Good morning. I got
got the honor of um, presenting an award to one of our ushers. Um, so I'm gonna read the award first. It's a Usher of the Month, September 2022. This certificate is awarded to, hold on, <laughs> for your stellar service as a part of the Youth Usher Board. The People's Baptist Church renders service with enthusiasm as to the Lord and not to men and women. Ephesians 6, 7. And this award is presented to our own. We've seen her as a baby in here. Jordan Tucker. church, but specifically this month, the youth ushers, all right? Amen. 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 Let's give Sister Tucker another hand. Amen. One of the angels of this, the People's Baptist Church. Uh, I'll be before you shortly and briefly this morning. My task is, uh, is easy because it's an opportunity for us to express love to someone who expresses love to so many. Amen. And the person that I speak of is the senior pastor of this house, the yeah. Reverend Eric yeah. J. Yeah. Good. Come on, let's welcome our pastor back home. Yeah. Welcome home, pastor. Yeah. It would be poor of us not to celebrate our own pastor. And so we stand today to highlight an opportunity that's been highlighted already by our marvelous assistant pastor. You recall that we've distributed envelopes. Typically an offering is raised for the pastor before his or her birthday, the Christmas month, and typically one is raised before they go on vacation. That was not done. Uh, but that does not mean we can bless him now that he's back from vacation. And so I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask that you go deep, deep. Somebody say deep, deep. Somebody go deep, deep down in their pocketbooks, their purses, if you will, as we look to bless our pastor. Now somebody say next Sunday. Next Sunday. Is next Sunday second Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. On second Sunday, we're going to present these envelopes that say love offering for Pastor Eric J. He couldn't even stay for this. But next Sunday, we're going to present these envelopes to him, and I ask that you join me in honoring our pastor. Now, let me say this quickly. Our pastor leads us by example, yes, and he never raises an offering without him first offering yes, double and triple. Amen. So I'm going to follow my pastor's lead and declare that I'm going to start the offering with $150. He's worthy of that times 200. So won't you join me next Sunday as we bless our own, the Reverend Eric. Jalen Good, God be praised. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and are glad therein. Let me try that again. I said, This is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice and are glad therein. Let me try it again. I said, This is the day that the Lord has made. And we rejoice. <laughs> yeah. We rejoice. I don't know about you, but I, I, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless your hearts. 
Hallelujah. We're certainly grateful to God to be in the house of the Lord. I haven't seen y'all in a month. And uh, I'm grateful to see that uh, Drew, throughout this season, throughout the summer months, I want to say this. I am godly proud of each of you, uh, our leadership. And uh, let's give thanks to our assistant pastor who, with dignity, amen. Amen. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Let's celebrate her. God bless you. Hallelujah. She led us masterfully through this month, and I'm grateful for her leadership, and I'm grateful for the ministerial staff that we have here. We are now incorporating all of the ministers in the life of the church. Uh, we're just grateful to God. Um, let me, I got a couple of things I need to emphasize. Um, <clears throat> this morning before I came out, and I'm asking that you would join me in praying for this congregation. Uh, we go to this church yearly, the Felton Street Fellowship Baptist Church. Uh, I just received word that they were locked out of their building as they were going to worship. And so um, after this service, um, I've opened the door for them to come and hold their church business meeting. Um, and that's what friends do. That, that's, that's what friends do. Um, and so we need to, we're going to open up the door for them. And I thank Deacon Major for uh, agreeing to stay and close up for me uh, for that worship service today. Or if not for that, for that meeting today. And so uh, let's pray for them. Amen? Amen. Amen. They're, they're in an interesting transition, so we pray for them. All right, a couple of things I want to emphasize. Uh, we have some unsung heroes Y'all, nobody got happy. <laughs> All right. Now listen. Uh, now, now, I, I got to get all the names. Uh, somebody give me the names. Lamar Kenny. Lamar Kenny. Who else? Deacon Archie Rouse. Who else? Deacon Sunsaray Brown. And who else? Deborah Wisher. And is there one more? And Samaya Day. Now. Now. Somebody shout now. Now my, I just received some word that the hospitality ministry, they need y'all help. And so if you can purchase a ticket, uh, I'm going to lead by example. How much are the tickets? Twenty-five dollars. I'm going to give the hospitality. <laughs> I'm going to give the hospitality ministry fifty dollars for a t for two tickets. Um, although I'm pastor, I'm going to lead by example. So I'm giving you all fifty dollars. I'm going to ask that all those who can, all those in leadership. Let's be here to support these candidates, these in these honorees. They give so much of themselves in the service of God. Amen. Yeah. And so, if you would do me a favor and purchase your ticket uh, today, or at least tell them that you're gonna purchase your ticket, yeah. and then purchase your ticket. Can can somebody clap your hands and give God praise? Yeah. Hallelujah. That's not it, y'all. We have an exciting weekend on, that was the 17th, but on the 18th. Somebody shout the 18th. The 18th. Our men are going to kick it out in grand style. We are going to have an amazing, amazing, and I do mean amazing, men's day. Um, now, I need some brothers who don't mind singing. Uh, Brother Jojo will be leading that effort. And someone said, well, uh, Brother Pastor, I can't sing. Well, Gladys Knight had the pips. So you can be the pips. <laughs> you ain't got to lead the song, but you can be the pips. Somebody say amen. <laughs> but listen, on the ninth, somebody shout the ninth. I need every brother who can some, I, even if you don't know how to sing, carry a note, come on and be on this men's day choir. I want to see a choir stand full of men singing on that day. Amen. 
That's my bitch. That now that would you know how we saw on Women's Day the women came up here and they listen, brothers, don't let these sisters, you know, you know, you know, show y'all up now. Amen. So, all right, all right, all right. So y'all got my y'all got my drift. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, all right, all right. What else did I gotta say? Uh, on the on the twelfth of September, um, I will be at one forty five preaching for the Baptist Pastors and Ministers Conference of and Vicinity. Um, that's at a conference I attend every more every Monday. Uh, and it would be wonderful if I could have some of my folk uh, come on over there at 145 at Second uh, Mount Zion. It, it address is located in your program. So if you could be there, uh, officers, membership, those who can be here if you're not working, come on and join me over there at Second Mount Zion. Church, say amen. amen. All right. I also want to say this morning. Uh, we had a good inaugural service for our 8 a.m. service. What a beautiful, spirited time. And uh, we got in at 8 o'clock and we're dismissing at about 8.45, 8.50. And so uh, we don't church long, uh, but we had a full service, <clears throat> but it was a meaningful service. And also on this coming Friday, we will bid farewell to a saint of God in the person of Sister Marie Clark, who served this church dutifully. She would sit in the back uh, when, uh, when Sister Dolores would come to the 10 o'clock. She would sit right beside Sister Patsy. And so, you know, and, um, but she was a saint of God, a very quiet saint, but, a, uh, but her impact has certainly been felt. So on this coming uh, Friday, we will celebrate her life and legacy. Amen? Now, I can't, I can't do this without, because I'm going to get in trouble if I don't. Let me ask the wonderful ladies who assist and make sure they pastor is good. Make sure I got water. They make sure whatever I need, even if they, you know, they got a fundraise and all that other stuff. They made sure I was able to get a good vacation in terms of taking a trip, let me ask the pastor's aide to please stand. I want to recognize them. They, for the last eight years since I've been here, they, can y'all help me celebrate them? Come on. Come on, can we turn around and face the camera? Turn around and... All right. Matter of fact, y'all come on around for a second. I want the people on the camera to see y'all. Come on, come on. Don't they look wonderful? Come on, give them a standing ovation. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and Brother Stephen Reed, I dare not forget you. Amen. He's on that pastor's aid. Come on, come on. Thank you. Uh, I want to personally thank each of you. And Deacon Rouse has also assist at, at times. Uh, but all of you for the last eight years have made my ministry comfortable. And I appreciate each of, I don't take anything you do for granted. I love you, thank you. All right, come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Now, I wanna take a moment, <clears throat> uh, I'm moving. But I want to take a moment. Uh, Sister Beverly Reed, there was a diagnosis that she received. Um, I will not disclose that because, you know, I want to protect that. Uh, but I want you to know that it's serious enough that she needs our prayers. How many of you believe that God is a healer? Hmm? And the Bible declares, and I'm going to ask that Sister Beverly, somebody escort her down. But the Bible declares, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. And let them pray, anointing them with oil. And the prayer of faith will save them. Can I get a witness? I still believe. That God is a miracle worker. Huh? Now, I got some witnesses in here 
And I always bring her up because she is such a vital testimony. I always bring Sister Coca up because they had given her six months. And look at how God is yet preserving her. Huh? So we got miracles in this house. And I certainly believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that Sister Beverly, thank you very much, that Sister Beverly is going to be another miracle. She's giving me the okay to release the information. And that information is simply this, that the doctors have diagnosed and said that there's a, there is an aneurysm in her head. And she may need to have brain surgery. God is a miracle worker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that her family would join me up here. Her family, come on. We're, come on, family. Yeah, I want y'all to stand with you. Glory to Jesus. Ministers and, and deacons, those who can, you can. Yes. Yes, God is. He's real in my soul. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, God is real. Glory. Hallelujah. For he has washed and made me whole. Oh, his love for me. Oh, is no. Oh, yes, God is real. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, God is. Hallelujah. He's real in my soul. Oh, yes, God is free. He's what? Oh, his love for me. Oh, hurry. Yes, sir. His life you go. Father, in the name, glory, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we come to you right now. We come to you in faith. We come to you in hope. Because we do know, Lord, that there is nothing, glory, that you cannot do. And so, God, we come on, glory, hallelujah. We come on behalf of your servant now. Lord, she's been singing for you a long time. Had some uphill journeys. Had some battles. Has lost her sibling. But God, you have kept her thus far. And so even now she's come up against another challenge. But we know, God, you can do anything but fail. 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 And so, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray now that you would heal as only you can. That you would give the doctors wisdom. That you would give them understanding. That they will treat your servant even now. I pray that you would anoint her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And oh God, we claim victory right now. We claim healing right now. According to your will and according to our faith. We thank you right now. We bless you right now. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 And we bless you now. We bless you now. Come on, if you believe God has done it, clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, open your mouth and give him praise. Come on, open your mouth and give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Ha! Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Woo. Come on. Ain't nobody say stop praising him. Come on and give him praise. Somebody else we need to pray for. We're praying for hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're praying for Jamil's, brother Jamil's sister and Minister Brown's daughter. Uh, she was just diagnosed, if my memory serves me correct, lupus and it's attacking her lungs. And so right now, let's, let's pray now in the name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. We believe you can heal it even now. And so touch that body now in Jesus' name. Get glory to yourself right now. And we claim victory. We claim healing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. God bless you. Y'all forgive me, but I believe that, that healing is in order. Hallelujah. Want to say this? Y'all can be seated. Thank you, choir. Thank you. Hallelujah. You can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. And so I, I'm not going to stress this too long. You know how to give. You've been doing it now. Uh, continue to give as God has blessed you. You know we are still in our capital campaign, and we're working on a couple of things, and I'm hoping to have a report to you about the floor downstairs that needs to be repaired. So I will have information for you in the next couple of weeks uh, once I get all the information for you. Uh, let's pray now. <clears throat> Gracious God, thank you for get the gift of giving. We realize that we can't beat you giving, but at least we're going to try. Strengthen us. Bless each gift and giver as well. Let it be to the praise and the glory of your name. And we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. <clears throat> now we're going to go to the official prayer for the sick... <laughs> and our youth. 
Um, again, we are grateful for the prayers, and we know that God can do anything but fail. As Deacon Ross readies himself, lead me, God, along.
them to know what the law to lead them. Hallelujah. 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 H
in heaven all day. I'm not going to be on this earth always. I'm going to be up in heaven singing with the angels. Walk around heaven all day. One of these mornings won't be very long. You will look for me and I'll be gone. I'm going to a place where I have nothing, nothing to do but walk around heaven all day. Oh, when I get to heaven, I'm going to jump and shout. There'll be nobody, there'll be nobody to put, put me out. Oh, my mother will be waiting. And my father, my father too. We'll jump, we'll walk around, walk around heaven. All day, Lord, don't you hear when you hear me pray? Walk, walk right by, by my side. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. When my way, my way gets so dark. Every day will be Sunday, my Lord. Sunday would have no end. We'll be do nothing but sing, sing his praise. Oh, when he say, well done. My race, my race will be won. We're gonna walk around, walk around heaven. We're going to walk around, walk around heaven. We're going to walk around, walk around heaven. We're going to walk around, walk around heaven. No more sickness, walk around heaven. No more, more walk around, walk around heaven. See my mother, walk around heaven. We'll see, we'll walk around. Walk around heaven all day. Hallelujah. Wow, <clears throat> there's something in particularly unique about this service this morning. And uh, toward the end of the worship, I'm, I'm gonna do a special altar call um, for those who need prayer. Um, <clears throat> before I forget, we thank God uh, Deacon Rouse was experiencing vertigo, but the Lord has given him relief now in Jesus' name. Um, his niece, Brianna, is in the hospital as we speak. And so we're praying healing for her in Jesus' name. Um, but uh, we're, before the service ends, uh, we're going to do a special altar call for those who need prayer. Uh, I believe that <clears throat> uh, healing is in the building. And... Whatever you need from God, it's there. Uh, preachers, 
deacons, trustees, musicians, choir. Uh, Sister Beverly, thank you for allowing the Lord to use you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I want to read, uh, I'm not going to be long by, by the grace of God. I'm in a series of sermons. I start sermons. I started it this morning and I want to pick it up right now. First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one. Uh, I'm going to be preaching and teaching <clears throat> through the book of first Corinthians. Uh, so you don't want to miss the series that I'm going to be in. I've been waiting to get to this for a couple of weeks now. Um, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 1, God be praised. Ushers, nurses, thank you. Our youth ushers, God bless you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, Pastor Zaid, <clears throat> thank you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Thank the Lord. <clears throat> I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. That you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you so that you come short in no gift eagerly waiting for the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm or sustain you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God be praised for his word. You may be seated. <clears throat> Amen. Lord, thank you again for the moment of preaching. I pray that you would hide your servant behind the cross of Calvary, that Jesus the Christ and him alone might receive glory and honor. Let the words of my mouth, <clears throat> meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. I want to preach a little bit from this thought on this morning. We have everything we need. <clears throat> We have everything we need. We have everything <clears throat> we need. I made this confession this morning, and I think it's best that I make a confession in the pulpit this morning. Uh, as I assume, as I reassume my pastoral duties, I need to make a confession to you, the People's Baptist Church. I have a habit that is sometimes very toxic and is sometime and it is rather embarrassing i'm actually ashamed of the habit that i have the behavior that i have and i hope as a result of you hearing my confession this morning that you will still look at me with some level of respect and reverence i have a very bad habit y'all uh, i have a very bad behavior i have a very bad practice and I hope again what I'm about to tell you I hope it doesn't offend you I hope it doesn't make you mad at me are you ready for my confession good here's my confession my confession is Deacon Lynn that every time I go to the grocery store I always end up buying things that are already in the house I, I, I have, it's a very sick, twisted habit that I will go to the grocery store and look, and some of y'all probably say, I wonder what kind of confession pastor had. See, I got y'all now, didn't I? <clears throat> uh, but I have this sick, twisted habit. I will go to the market and get things that are already in the house when I could have just taken an inventory and made sure that what I had, what I was looking for was already in the house because sometimes it's in the house but it's not in a proper place. It's already in the house. 
Brothers and sisters, I think that's what Paul is really trying to get over to us as he's writing to a church that is going through or that is having some challenges. This church is having some blunders. They have made some mistakes. But Paul spends some time in this letter and he wants to encourage and not only encourage but also give them some critique in as to how they have been behaving. He begins this letter off by identifying himself as an apostle according to the will of God. And not only that, but he calls them the he calls the church sanctified and called to be God's people. Don't miss that. They are sanctified. And they are called to be God's people. Y'all quiet on me. I said they are sanctified and called to be God's people. One more time. They are sanctified and they are called to be God's people. What's so interesting about this, y'all, is that this church was not living a sanctified life. They were everything other than sanctified but yet Paul calls them sanctified what I've discovered about God the beauty of God's grace is that God doesn't identify us by our problems but God identifies us by our possibilities y'all don't know when to get happy I, I said God doesn't identify us by our problems but he identifies us by our possibilities I don't know about you but brothers and sisters I'm so glad that I serve a God who looks beyond my faults and looks beyond my foolishness looks beyond my blunders looks beyond my failures and God sees the best in me can, can I get somebody here that can testify that even some of the stupid stuff you've done that God does not call you by your mistakes but he calls you by his grace Lord have mercy can, 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 can we get happy just for a minute right in the room and test and thank God this morning that it was God's amazing grace that God doesn't look at you even when people judge you even when people uh, mis uh, when people stereotype you God is still looking at your possibilities so they're called to be sanctified and called to be God's people. What does it mean to be sanctified? Uh, sanctified just means to be set apart. It means to be set apart. Somebody shout set apart. It means now I was talking to a Pentecostal clergy uh, a colleague one day and we were talking about this idea, this concept of holiness. And one of the things I said to him was this, that even though I understand you are, you are Pentecostal, but Baptist folk are called to be holy. See how quiet you got on me right there? I, I said, Baptist folk are called to be holy. And being holy has nothing to do with whether you speak in tongues or wear a dress way down uh, your foot. It doesn't have anything to do with whether you uh, put makeup on or anywhere, don't wear pants. Listen, uh, being holy, being holy means to be integral. It means that I live in such a way that God can use me. Can I get a, can I get a witness in here? Because you cannot wear makeup you cannot you can wear a long dress and still go to hell can I get a can I get a witness in here it's not about what's uh, it's not about what you wear but it's about what's in your heart and allowing the Holy Spirit through the grace of God to change your heart it, it's, a, it's like making that confession that the things I used to do come on help me preach I don't do no more the places I used to go I don't go no more because oh what a wonderful change come on help me preach here like in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart he switches now the thought and he says in verse number four ah uh, I, every time I think about you, I'm thankful. Paul, Paul, listen at me again. Paul says to the church, every time I think about you, I'm thankful. Let me say it again. Paul says, Reverend Michelle, every time I think about you, I'm thankful. Yeah, let me say it again. The church was messed up, but Paul said, every time I think about you, I get joy. Let me say it again. The church had failures. The church had blunders. But Paul said, every time I think about you, I get thankful. 
He says, I'm thankful because of what God has done through you. God has given you grace. Yeah, yeah. 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 I said, God has given you grace. Somebody shout grace. grace. Somebody shout again, grace. grace. Now, I know why you didn't get happy. I don't know why you didn't get happy. I know why you didn't get happy. <clears throat> because you need me to talk a little bit about grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Grace is what God gives you even though you don't deserve it. God is looking beyond you and still blessing you. Y'all still don't know when to get happy. Can I get somebody in here that can testify that I'm only here in church today because of God's grace? I'm I'm saved today because of God's grace. Listen, God, listen, I'm not I'm, I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. In fact, if you still catch me on the wrong day, I might cuss you from A to Z. One, two, three, and reverse it back over again. But thanks be to God for his grace. Can I get somebody to tell God, thank you for grace? Come on, can I get somebody here to tell God, thank you for grace? Listen, it's grace that keeps my fist from having fellowship with some folks' face. It's God's grace. Yeah, yeah. Somebody shout grace. Somebody shout grace. In fact, can I help y'all? Grace, you need grace in every facet of your life. You need grace to live right. That's according to number Titus. You need grace to operate in your spiritual gift. That's according to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7. You need grace in order to work hard in ministry. You, you need grace to deal with your thorn. You need grace. Amen. The more you live, the more you appreciate God's grace. The, the, the more you live, the more you appreciate God's grace. And church, I want you to have an appreciation for the grace of God. I want you to have an appreciation because reality is, it's not God's grace that just brings you to Christ, but it's God's grace involved in every dimension of your life. Thank God for God's grace. So in this text, Paul begins to unpack what grace looks like. And his theme the major message of this text, and I'm almost through, but the major message of this text is this, that because of the grace of God, we have everything that we need. And I speak now in the context of the People's Baptist Church located at 5039 Baltimore Avenue, Philadelphia, PA 19143. I speak in the context, church, we have, because we have been recipients of the grace of God, we have everything that we need. All right, yeah. Lord, y'all make, boy, y'all, y'all told me y'all miss me, y'all acting like y'all don't. Let me, y'all making me work this morning. I said because of the grace of God, peoples, we got everything, everything. yeah, that we need. Yeah. 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 It's it. Thank you, Rev. It's in the house. Now, my aim in this sermon is to inform you and challenge you to think about this. That church, if we want to be effective in ministry, it is in the house. Now somebody would say, who's in leadership? Somebody would say, who's a, uh, an officer? We'll probably say, now Rev, I hear you. That sounds good. Uh -uh. But you come to me with a note of pessimism and cynicism. And you say, Reverend, that sounds good, but if everything is in the house, why is it that I see the same people doing everything in the church? Come on, come on, come on, let's, let's swim a little bit. Let's swim a little bit. Pastor, every time I turn around, it's the same people being asked to do different things. And I'm exhausted. I'm burnt out because every time I'm on this ministry, I'm on that ministry, I'm on that ministry. Every time they need something, they're calling me. Uh, Pastor, if they in the house, why ain't they stepping up? I came ready to preach this morning. Why ain't it? And my, the, come, the real relevant question, Pastor, if 
How do you know that everything that we need is in the house? Pastor, can you provide a biblical and theological explanation? I said, how you know that everything is in the house? Y'all want the answer? I said, do you want the answer? All right, let's get it and get out of here. Got 17 minutes to argue this. Let me hurry up and get through this. Here's how I know, Sister Kathy, that everything I, that we need is in the house. Because, and if you don't shout, I'm walking out, I'm going back on vacation. He's back. Here's how you know that we have everything that we need. Because we have been supplied in Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me say it again. We've been supplied in Christ. Let me say it again. We've been supplied in Christ. Now, Paul here has a high Christology. Christology just simply means the study of the person and work of Christ. He has a high view of Christ. That's what I'm saying. He has a high view of Christ. Somebody shout a high, high view, view of Christ. What he's simply saying is that everything that God accomplishes, he accomplishes it in Christ. And he says that the church is what it is, not because of who it is, but because of who God is. Yeah. That's it. That's it. All right. That's it. Lord, y'all making me work. He's saying, church, you are who you are, not because of who you are, but because of who God is and what God has done in Christ. See, you don't want to get happy. See, some of y'all didn't get happy because you think it's all about you. But brothers and sisters, the reality is it's not what us, what we have done, but it's all of what Christ. So he says, verse number five. He says, I give thanks to God for the grace that's been given to you because you have been enriched in him. You've been made rich. Peoples, we are rich. <laughs> Let me say it again. Peoples, we are rich. Someone said, someone said this Negro must have had some real fun down there. What he mean we rich? Did somebody hit the number? What he mean we rich? Did, did, did he hit the jackpot? What he mean? Rich here in the text is not referring to your material possessions because having possessions don't make you rich. All right. You can have material, but if you ain't got Christ, you still poor. You see, what does it profit a one to gain the whole world and lose their soul? But let me also say this. Ain't nothing wrong with having some money. A little, a little bit. Uh, yeah. Because uh, I, I know I got some ballers up in this church. Uh, let me move. But Paul says, we've been made rich in Christ because we have Speech and knowledge. Speech and knowledge. Speech, knowledge. What he means by speech, you, if you read, we're going to study First Corinthians, one of the things they had a problem with, those folk gratified speaking in tongues. I mean, they thought they were super spiritual when they spoke in tongues. And then there were those who elevated tongues over prophecy, over preaching. 
and, and, and it's not the gift that Paul, that Paul is not going to attack the gift, but he's going to attack the usage of gifts. You see, you can have spiritual gifts and misuse and abuse spiritual gifts. Let me see if I can make that make sense. Because every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of light in whom there is no variableness nor shadow in turning. God is the greatest giver, but sometimes we abuse the gift of God. When you become arrogant, conceited, and think you're more anointed than somebody else, you are abusing the gift of God. He says, you got both wisdom, no, you got speech and knowledge. And he says that was displayed as the testimony of Christ, verse 6, was confirmed in you. So when you heard the word and when you accepted the word, you were exact confirmation. And when you accepted the message, you, it was confirmed. The testimony of Christ was confirmed. Look at verse 7. He says, you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. You are not lacking, listen at me, in any spiritual gift. All right, let me say it again. You are not lacking in any spiritual gift. You see, when God saved you, he endowed you with spiritual gift. God, now I'm going to make somebody mad. But God never saved you to sit your behind in the pew. Come on, come on. Some, cause watch this. There's some folk that say, "Preacher, listen, I ain't, I, I'm not serving in no ministry. I'm just coming to church, just to go and get my praise on and go back home." But you, brothers and sisters, are operating opposite a biblical standard. When God saved you, He saved you to serve. Yeah. 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 Church, the church membership. God sent me here on this first Sunday mm -hmm. to remind each of you mm -hmm. that you have no business just sitting where you are. All right. All right. All right. Right. Sitting on your blessed assurance. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, there, Paul says, as we are coming to the end, as we are hastening to the coming of Christ, you see, history is moving to a goal. It's not repeating itself. It's not aimless, but it's moving to the point when Jesus Christ will return. But until Christ returned, he put the church in position. And watch this. You are called to serve. The people's pantry needs y'all. The choir needs y'all. Yeah, yeah. Hospitality needs y'all. Yeah, yeah. Nurses need y'all. Yeah. Ushers need y'all. Yeah. Willing workers need y'all. Yeah. Trustees need y'all. Deacons need y'all. Come on, can I dance ministry? Needs y'all. Listen, brothers and sisters, there are a plethora of ministries. Evangelism needs you. Missions needs you. Listen, you got a gift and it's your responsibility to activate it. You are not just another number. Yeah. And I might make, make somebody else mad. You are not just another offering. That's right, that's right. You are not, I got to close. You are not just another offering. You are not just another placement in the seat. But God has gifted you divinely. And God said, get up. Get up. Get now by implication... Every ministry needs to open its arms. There is nobody that should be hindered from serving. Open your arms. And there might be someone here who's not a part of a church. Go ahead, ushers. I see you back there opening your arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there might be someone here who's not a part of a church. You saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost, filled, five baptized, got Jesus on your mind, running for your life, and don't take nothing for your journey now. But let me tell you something. 
It's time to get into a church where you can serve and grow. And before we let go today, I'm going to tell you, listen, today, People's Baptist Church is open to you. You can become part of this family and we can grow together and serve. All right. All right. All right, it's time for me to knock off. I'm going to preach twice today. Let time to knock off. Come on. Uh, we've, been, we've, been, we've been supplied in Christ, but one more thing, we are sustained by Christ. Paul moves from affirming the gift to giving a promise. He says that Christ sustains you. Christ sustains you. The reason why I'm saved is because Christ sustains me. The reason why I don't lose my salvation is because Christ sustains me. I can't lose what I didn't earn. Let me help y'all. For you folks that can lose your salvation, if you can lose your salvation, you work for your salvation. But I hear the Bible say, by grace are you saved. Come on, let's have church here. Through faith and that not of yourself. It's a gift of God, no, uh, not of works, lest anyone should boast. What the text, when, when Paul says that Christ sustains us, he's borrowing something from the culture. Whenever in the culture you want to make a deal you, or enter into a business proposition, you used a contract. And the contract was binding and it had to be fulfilled. What Paul is saying is that God has entered into an unbreakable covenant with us that even when I fail to live up to the covenant, God still is faithful to me. Isn't that good news, brothers and sisters? I said, isn't that good news, brothers and sisters? Because there are moments I don't live up to the covenant. There are moments I still act like a fool. But thanks be to God that he's still in love with me. That God, can I get a witness in here? Can I get somebody to testify that God is still in love with me? As messed up as I am, he's in love. I got to knock off. I got to knock off. I got to knock off. But he says... He's presenting you until the time you are blameless. Now, let me tell you this. If you don't shout, I'm going to shout. That when God looks at us, he doesn't see us, even though we are weak, fragile creatures. When God looks at us, we are covered in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. I am blameless positionally, and one day I'm going to be blameless practically. I'm so glad, brothers and sisters, that my mistakes are not the final story. Can I get somebody here that can testify that my mistakes are not the final story? I made some mistakes, but it's not the final story. I might as well go on and close it right through here. Can I get somebody to testify today that I'm jacked up from the flow up, but that's not the final story? Can I get somebody that can testify right now that the reason I'm in church the reason I'm praising my savior is because Jesus has covered me yes yes I gotta close I gotta get out of here but can I get somebody that can testify that you're covered in his righteousness yes 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 but one more thing I gotta deal with in the text in verse number 9 the writer declared that God he's faithful can you throw your hands up and shout God he's faithful which means that even when I don't do right God will always be right yes yes oh Lord I really gotta go but there's one more thing in the 
this text uh, that Jesus, uh, that God uh, called me uh, into fellowship uh, with his son uh, so I can testify uh, what a fellowship, uh, what a joy divine uh, leaning uh, on uh, the everlasting arm. Uh, what a blessedness, uh, what a peace that's mine. Leaning, uh, leaning uh, on uh, the everlasting arm. Can I get somebody that can testify uh, that I'm leaning uh, on Jesus? Uh, the storm clouds may rise, the winds may blow, but I'm leaning on Jesus. Uh, and the same power that raised Jesus up, the same power that raised him up is the same power operating in me and gives me strength from day to day. No wonder the writer declared, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Can you shout yeah, yeah. and say neighbor I'm leaning on Jesus one more time shake your neighbor by the hand and rock him and shave him shake him and rock him and say neighbor I'm leaning on Jesus when it's good I'm leaning on Jesus when it's bad I'm leaning on Jesus throw your hands Shout yeah. yeah. Ain't he all right? Yeah. Ain't he all right? Yeah. Shout yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Church, we have everything that we need. So here's what is needed. I need some folk that will say to the Lord, I'm available to you. My will, I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way. And enable me to say, my storage is empty. Can I get someone that's in here that can testify? I, I'm, I'm here to serve. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm here to serve. And I, I and y'all, I get it. Sometimes you need to break. I needed to break too. Need to step away sometimes. But you can step away, but don't walk away. Uh-huh. It's okay to step away sometimes, but when Jesus says something, and Deacon Ron says it oftentimes, that those who put their hand to the gospel plow and look back are not fit for the kingdom. Too many times I got people who get discouraged and they say, I'm not doing anything no more. But today is the day. I'm closing because we got we to gotta go. 
but I want you to know yes, every one of you yes, Lord. is important. Yes. Yes. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, neighbor. Yes. Even, without position, even without a position, you's important too. Huh? Lord, I'm available to you. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, my will. My will I give to I'll do. I forgot to make mention. I don't know how I forgot to do that. But they celebrate the anniversary and they need you too. Pastor Zay needs you. Huh? Today, the first invitation I want to extend is for someone who does not know Jesus. I extend to you the invitation to become part of the family of God. To trust in Jesus for yourself. Deacon Shaw, is that you? God bless you, my friend. God bless you. If you're not saved, don't know Jesus, have not trusted him for yourself, come on and get saved. Come on and get saved. Watch me online or in person. Come on. Are you here? And I Are you here? Maybe here you're saved, but you're not a part of a church. Listen, People's Baptist is open to you. Come on. Be a part of this family. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let a candidate of baptism, Christian experience. Come on. My will. I'll do. If you're here, you want to be a part of this church? Come on. Come on. Maybe you're going to watch the service later on. And we won't be, you won't have the benefit of watching us live. Glory to Jesus. There's going to come a prayer that's going to show up on your screen. I invite you to recite that prayer. And when you recite that prayer, my friend, you will be brought, God bless you, into the family of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we go, we're going to get ready to get out of here. But I want to do a quick altar call for those who just need special prayer. Come to the altar. We're going to do a general prayer. Come on. If you need prayer, come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord, I'm available to you. My
let's pray. There's somebody here whose hand you're holding. They've had a rough week. Some are having some difficult moments. But I just want you to gently squeeze that hand. Squeeze hope in that hand. Squeeze love in that hand. Glory to Jesus. And just whisper this. Lord, whatever my neighbor needs, grant it to them in Jesus' name. Father, bless your people. Thank you, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Those watching me online, stretch your hand towards your screen. We believe by faith that God can meet you right where you are. Glory. God, even now in Jesus' name, we pray now the prayer of faith. We pray that you would continue to touch the vertical of Deacon Rouse. Continue to grant healing now to his body. You can do it. Glory. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray for Brianna right now, Lord God. We pray that, God, you would give the doctors wisdom and then bring her back home in Jesus' name. Lord God, there's somebody in this circle that's going through their own moments. There, oh, we pray now for Sister Humphrey, Lord, as there's still some pain, there's still some agony, but Lord, you are the God of all comfort. You can heal. You can grant satisfaction. You can fill the void. Hallelujah. We thank you for Sister Pat's son, how you brought him home, Lord. We bless you now. But then we pray that you would touch her body as she continues to run up and down to see him. And she gives so much of herself. So God, now in the name of Jesus, replenish her. Give her grace even now in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray for every leader that served throughout this month. Restore unto them the joy of their salvation. Give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And God, we praise you. Ah, God. There's somebody in here, Lord. Thank you for stirring up the gifts. Thank you for performing miracles. Thank you for rebuking the devil. Hallelujah. And we thank you now. Now we go in peace. We go in faith. We go knowing and trusting that there's nothing too hard for you. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Go in peace. The Lord be with you. We're going to get out of here. We get ready to get out of here, saints of God. And I'm grateful for, I hope you all enjoy worship today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you for the marvelous reception. I'm glad to be home. I was, by the third week, I was ready to come on back to y'all. Uh, but I certainly enjoyed my time, and I'm grateful to be back where I belong, in the pulpit of the People's Baptist Church. Amen. Yeah. All right, we have a light week this week. Um, I ask that you would keep Sister Anita Minor in prayer as she had a close uh, loved one to pass. I'm going down to Washington to be with her on Wednesday. So if y'all need me, I'll be in Washington, but I'll be back the same day. Uh, so any appointments, we're just going to move to Tuesday or Thursday. Friday, we'll be here for the uh, funeral services for Sister Marie Clark, and then deacons meeting will be on Saturday. So every deacon, somebody shout every deacon, needs to be present. All right, um, I think that's it. Y'all ready to go home? Yeah, amen. Now if y'all don't say it better than that, I'll, I'll preach another sermon. <laughs> I done wrote seven sermons so I can preach them all right now. Y'all better stand up. <laughs> God bless you. Oh, all right. Before we go, come on, ushers. Give, 
Give me some giving music. Give me the Lord is blessing me right now. Started me on my way. The Lord is blessing right now. Oh, right now. One more time. The Lord is blessing. I said the Lord. Oh. Shall we pray now? Loving God, thank you now for this worship. Thank you for both worship experiences. You met us in both moments, and thank you for speaking to us. Now, loving God, as we go into a, a new week, we have new possibilities, new blessings, new opportunities. I pray for those watching me and those in the room, May this be a glorious week. May somebody receive a miracle this week. May someone be healed this week. May someone be the recipient of your grace this week. Now may the love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth, and even evermore we sing. with you.